Greetings one and all around the world. Nine, nine more episodes after today until the changeover of the daily devotional format. It is January the 22nd and there's 344 days left in the year and I hope you're all having a great day. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, click a like, and most importantly, if you've been around for a while in these last few episodes, find somebody to share this with so that we can uh, get some people encouraged by the 10 minutes that we spend together each day. All right, let's get into it with the scripture of the day. Philippians 4.13, one of my favorites. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's not some things, that's all things. For those of you reading the Bible in a year, you're up to Exodus 4 to 6, Matthew 14, 22 to 36. All right, let's get into those thoughts for the day. Either you control your attitude or it controls you. You should always leave loved ones with loving words. It may be the last time you see them. For every 60 seconds of anger, you lose one minute of happiness. See, that's math formula. Here's your motivation for the day. Don't limit yourself. Many people limit themselves to what they think they can do. You can go as far as your mind lets you. What you believe, you can achieve. And through God, all things are possible. I can do all things, right? There's that Philippians 4.13. All right, on this day in history in 1923, the tomb of Egyptian King Tutankhamun, King Tut, is opened by British archaeologists Lord Carnarvon and Howard Carter. In 2014, vapor, water vapor is detected on the dwarf planet of Ceres. Here's your personal story of the day. Genesis 45, verse 7. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. References from Genesis 44 to 45. Joseph chose to forgive his brother's sin of selling him into slavery and telling their father he was dead. You know, as a second most powerful man in Egypt, he could have had them executed or imprisoned, but he knew God had directed his every step. And this knowledge helped him overcome his natural feelings. Who would have blamed him? But there's better things. So in today's verses, we get to enjoy the climax of a suspenseful story. Joseph planted a silver cup in his brother's Benjamin's sack and then made a false accusation to see what his other brothers would do. Had they changed? Yes. Judah, he told the whole story to try and gain Joseph's sympathy, and he offered to make good on his vow to take Benjamin's place. These were not the same men who had jumped on the chance to sell Joseph into slavery more than 20 years before. In response, Joseph finally revealed his identity in one of the most gripping, emotional scenes in the biblical narrative, and it's true. His brothers were terrified by the unexpectedness, the switch in languages, the sudden presence of their long-lost brother, their frailty, and their deep feelings of guilt. Joseph, however, did not seek revenge. Instead, he provided for his family's needs, inviting them to come and live in the best part of Egypt. More significantly, he comforted and forgave his brothers, assuring them that God sent me ahead of you and that it had been his saving plan governing Joseph's life all along. What a wonderful story, eh? And how about the devotional thoughts for the day? About friends for life. Jesus was having dinner one evening when many tax collectors and the sinners came to sat down with him. Read Matthew 9, 10. The religious leaders of that day were outraged by his behavior. Their conclusion was that Jesus was a friend of sinners. And as it turns out, well, he was. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus was morally separate from sinners and never took part in their lifestyle. Yet he did not separate himself physically from sinful people. He spent time with them and became their friend. Just like Jesus, you and I can't help but rub shoulders with all kinds of people in our daily activities. If you're working, you know, you're going to be out there. Tetulan, an early Roman writer, described the relationships between the Christians and the non-Christians of his day this way. We live among you, eat the same food, 
wear the same clothes, we sojourn with you in the world, renouncing neither forum, nor market, nor bath, nor booth, nor workshop, nor inn. We till the ground with you. We join with you in business ventures. We too must seek the unsaved, just as Jesus did. And it doesn't take much effort. It's good to ask ourselves from time to time, how many friends do I have who are lost? Final thought is, age is no problem. 2 Samuel 5, verses 3 and 4. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. Someone once uh, defined middle age as a brief period of time between being too young to do something and being too old to want to. And, you know, there's truth in that. I can speak from experience. It seems we spend time in the first part of our lives being told, now nah, you're, you're too young to do this. You're too young to drive. You're too young to get married. And then we spend the latter years of our lives being told, no, 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 you're too old to start a new career. You're too old to go back to school. You're too old to live alone. In Western society, age is often a critical factor. And, you know, it's, it's no doubt that David, when he began to reign at age 30, someone would have said, well, you're too young and we need somebody older. And by the time he'd ruled for 40 years and reached a respectable age of, yeah, 70, others were probably saying, David, you know, maybe you're too old to be king. It's time to turn it in, you know, pack it in and give it to somebody younger. But in God's sight, age is not really an issue. Scripture indicates that God uses the very young. The prophet Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth, in Jeremiah 1.6. But God used him anyway. On the other hand, there were the men like Caleb, who still at age 85, could still claim, I wholly followed the Lord, in Joshua 14. The Apostle John continued to minister and, according to tradition, wrote the book of Revelation in his elder years, 90s. You know, is somebody telling you that you're too young to serve the Lord? Don't believe it. Is somebody telling you that you're too old to respond to God's calling? Forget it. God and age, it's never an excuse for him. So don't follow their advice. Follow the Spirit. Let's conclude with some fun facts for the day. Did you know the values on the Monopoly game board are the same today as they were in 1935? And depending on what version, I know that they have some updated versions. And the pharaohs of ancient Egypt wore garments made with thin threads of beaten gold. Some fabrics had up to 500 gold threads per one inch of cloth. Here's your closing thought. Lord, I want to do more for you. Help me serve my church better. So get on with it. Let's get out there and let's build each other up and, and serve together, shall we? All right, let's have a joke. Anybody like Barbie dolls? You remember that? And the man was driving home one evening and realized it was his daughter's birthday and he hadn't bought her a present. You know, he drove to the mall, ran down to the toy store, and he asked the store manager, Hey, how much is that new Barbie in the window? <laughs> kind of like a song, right? Well, the manager replied, well, which one? We've got the Barbie goes to the gym. That's 1995. Barbie goes to the ball. That's 1995. How about Barbie goes shopping? 1995. Barbie goes to the beach volleyball court. That's 1995. Barbie goes to the nightclub, 1995. And the divorce Barbie, well, that's $375. What? $375? That seems a little bit steep. Why is that? Well, it's because it comes with divorce Ken's house, his car, his pet, and uh, all of his, uh, his uh, jewelry and watches and other leftover assets. <laughs> that's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. See you tomorrow.